हेलो गुड इवनिंग आई एम सो सॉरी बिकॉज आई जस्ट मिस टू जनरेट द लिंक सो आई क्रिएटेड द लिंक जस्ट बिफोर फ्यू मिनट्स ठीक है नेक्स्ट टाइम ऑन राइट सो वेलकम टू सेशन टू दैट इज Mastering anatomy, head and neck, brain, and this time we'll be talking about cervical vertebras, right? In depth, we'll be talking about cervical vertebra. Official disclaimer: that uh, all these images they will be for educational purpose only. In fact, I missed to put that thing into the graphics. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now, see, uh, yesterday. i hope you must have revised because there are say very few students so we'll we'll take it bit slow for the first 5 7 minutes as i was i was uh, say involved in say creating so much of graphics and and uh, and the material i just forgot to create the link right so we just give some time to our friends okay meantime let's revise something see in case of cervical vertebra this is what we have already talked about right cervical vertebra a uh, singular would be vertebra right that would be vertebra so we were dealing with c1 to c7 and out of which c1 c2 and c7 they are special right so we'll call them atypical right they are called as atypical and the rest of them that is c3 to c6 they are typical when we say typical that means their characteristics they are quite similar standard right so in our today's discussion first we'll be talking about the typical vertebra now even in typical there are so many things where where one vertebra differs from other at some clinical point so we'll talk about it and then we'll be putting our special emphasis on c1 c2 c7 followed by x rays and in that we'll be watching in detail about all the structures and then there'll be some clinical things right okay so welcome to session 2 now so when we talk about uh, you must have noticed something why there is giraffe right do you see there is there is giraffe when i was i was say working on these cervical vertebra i came across one very interesting thing so that's why this giraffe is there <laughs> and why he is there you'll know within a minute okay so c1 to c7 okay so that means seven cervical vertebra right seven seven cervical vertebrae now you'll be surprised that almost all mammals right all mammals they have got seven cervical vertebra mammals means those who feed their young right feed their young with milk and that means they have got the mammary gland so they have got the mammary gland so they have got seven cervical vertebra now there are two very in fact three right there are three very interesting exceptions the first one the one what is called as the manati right uh commonly known as sea cow she is a mammal but she will be having six cervical vertebra then there is what is called as the sloth i'll show you they are very cute 
right there are two types two toed and three toed toe right the toe so one who has got two toes it has got five or six cervical vertebra one who has got three has got nine cervical vertebra now if you are wondering how are they looking right here they are here they are right see how cute are they this is sea cow right as such this is now like an endangered species right because it's it's a very silent very slow moving herbivorous right it is herbivorous marine mammal right found in water and marine mammal but the trouble is say it is now endangered that means it's vanishing so this is also called as the manate and this another cute looking gentleman right he is called as the sloth now see there are three toes right so this means he is now showing off that see i have got the highest number of cervical vertebras because he is three toed right he has got three toes 1 2 3 and he has got nine cervical vertebras so that's why he is so happy right? okay and in case if he is two toed so then he'll be having five or six so <laughs> looks like depressed ronaldo hmm okay <laughs> but definitely he is happy right very happy all right so let's start with with the some facts which we have already talked about the first is there is occipital condyle right occipital condyle is what we know very well now yesterday we talked about it at the base of the skull occipital condyle it is associated with c1 right c1 the first cervical vertebra and which is also called as the atlas right so there is atlanto atlanto occipital occipital joint right this is atlanto occipital joint today we'll be talking about c1 c2 all the typical vertebra and then we'll see the x-rays that means by the end of our today's session we should be absolutely comfortable with all the vertebra their parts how they look like how they look like in x-rays what happens when there is fracture what about say those specific structures how they can be important in the clinics right all those things should be completely well today we are not touching the ligaments next session would be for ligaments ligaments muscles right the real dissection that is what we'll we'll see so today we'll be familiar is uh, we'll familiarize ourselves with every structure now we know the base of the skull properly right so now we are talking about this atlanto occipital joint this atlanto occipital joint it is also called as the very easy to remember it is also called as the yes joint right it is the yes joint so yes that is flexion and extension right so that is why this is yes joint right that is atlanto occipital joint it's also involved in when you tilt the neck on one of the side right that is what is called as the lateral flexion so even in lateral flexion it is our a o joint right a o joint that is atlanto occipital right so from this point onwards we'll write it as a o joint so that is the lateral flexion when it comes to when it comes to say rotation right so flexion extension rotation right see that's where where these joints they are getting operated right this is again we are dealing with the ao joint right for the lateral flexion
and this is what is called as the rotation right so when we say rotation like this right so this is the rotation but in simple words we can say it is a no joint right it is no joint and that joint is between c1 and c2 so it is atlanto atlanto axial joint so this from this point onwards we'll call it a a joint right atlanto axial joint why i'm telling a o joint or atlanto a, a a joint because next time we'll be inserting all the ligaments all the muscles so that we'll see that how actually the entire movement occurs right so today we'll be talking about all the bony prominences so that should be crystal clear so let's start with the typical vertebra right the typical c3 to c6 correct now see this is like a close-up that's why it is looking so monstrous so big otherwise they are really very beautiful very delicate very small vertebras right okay we need to orient ourselves very properly that in, from which view are we actually watching so this is like an anterior view anterior view right? because that's the body that's the vertebral foramen there would be transverse process spinous process transverse process and here would be the spinal cord right so this means that vertebral body that is in front so this is anterior and this spinous process that would be posterior but keep this thing in mind right so here it is we are watching the body definitely we are having the anterior view so this means we are watching from anterior side so this is our anterior view fine now in the anterior view first thing first that this is upper surface and this is lower surface so what's the big thing in that right this is so obvious but the speciality is we change the color is this right these are the projecting lips right these are the projecting lips so from both the sides up from from the upper surface it is projecting upwards and this is what is called as the uncinate process right so that's the first thing which we have learned uncinate process so if this uncinate process is for upper vertebra so then for the lower one right it will also be having that uncinate process over here right as it will be forming so that's the reason see watch for that on the lower surface see this area that is concave right this is concave that's why we were talking about upper surface and lower surface because over here due to that concavity right this is where for uncinate process of lower vertebra of lower vertebra fine okay now these vertebra every time they'll be having superior articular facet and inferior articular facet superior with to talk with say upper one inferior to talk with the lower one here they are right this one is superior articular facet and this is inferior articular facet now actually what we wrote superior articular facet it is not correct why because that face is facing on the other side so what we are watching is we are just watching the projection so that means we need to change this name from facet we should make it process right so this is a process this is the projection which is up but its facet where it is articulating it is on the opposite side because it is smooth over here it is rough see the smooth process this is definitely a facet 
correct so that is face it opposite side and then we'll we'll just see now see there are there is one structure right? one structure like this and then there is other structure two yeah right now we are writing transverse process right transverse process still this point our entire concept was like transverse process means like this right so now what are we doing right what are we doing transverse process here and transverse process here well hang on right let's move on to the second image see we are watching it from the side so this means this is a lateral view lateral view right this is typical one right so it has got all the structures we'll draw it like this one say this which is going back right so that one would be so this one is anterior and this one is posterior right so this one is spinous process so that is spinous process and this one would be body well no marks for that it is so easy what about this projection what is what is this right this one well that is that unseen at process right that is unseen at process because they were so prominent from both the sides and then there is a depression but when we watch from the side yes we watch these these high walls which are on both the sides so that makes sense now see that this is what we were talking about that's the transverse process it means transverse process is typical it has got two two projections that's right so we need to see it in from other angle also and we will do that but right now we just write transverse process right transverse process so that is also good superior and inferior articular process so that's what it is over here see this is inferior articular process this one is superior articular process so this is superior and that one is inferior right putting the star putting the star and that is articular process and where they actually articulate that is the facet or the face right okay let's let's move to other this will make things better and better it will make it more and more clear which view should be right not to question your intelligence at all this is so easy right this is posterior view because we can see the spine that's the spine that's the spine or the spinous process right spinous process that's the spinous process and this one would be body yeah and then here it is right that's the top this is actually now superior articular articular you are right this is articular facet and this time over here we'll write inferior articular articular not facet but the process so this tells us that superior articular facet they'll be facing posteriorly and inferior articular facet they'll be facing anteriorly so that's how right that's how they they will be arranged all the entire all the vertebras right meantime here it is the transverse process right that one is transverse process so far things are okay we would like to add one more new thing into this that this is the superior articular faces this one is inferior articular face in between this portion this one right that is what is called as the lamina lamina in any of the vertebra there are only three four things to understand and your entire concept would be crystal clean let's see 
over here. Here this image clarifies all the doubts, right? All the doubts, everything so good, right? See, this is top view. First thing first, okay. That is, that is, that is the transverse process. Now we know that, okay, it is like this. It is like this. That's the transverse process, right? So now we can very confidently do it like this. That that's the transverse process. Okay. This is through. This is body. All right. Right. That is quite okay. And those prominence. So that's why this is the top view. Right. A posterior view looks like a remote of video game. Let me watch. Are huh? Mm -hmm. It's right. Tanu, today you will be very busy because there are lots and lots of images and where some some vertebras they are looking like a drone right from some angle they'll be looking like an eagle right so and and, and some new ideas from yours your side <laughs> okay so coming back to this this is transverse process in this transverse process the speciality is this the foramen right this is foramen transversarium transversarium In other words, foramen in transverse process. So this foramen transverse arium is because it will be carrying. Now you are familiar with that vertebral artery and vertebral vein, right? Yesterday we talked about it. Vertebral artery, vertebral vein plus inferior cervical ganglion. So these are the structures which will be passing through this. But there is one very interesting exception. But we'll talk about it as it will arrive. Right now, we'll say that yes, this is the foramen transverse arium, equal on both the sides. And it will gracefully carry vertebral artery, vertebral vein and inferior cervical ganglion. Right. So this is the vertebral foramen. Correct vertebral foramen which will be carrying the spinal cord that was the body and this is the unseenate process unseenate process which tells that yes we are watching from the top right and if you are watching from the top to then this is superior articular facet that's what we watch right this one because in fear would be the underside now this sheet, this is what is called as the lamina, right? This lamina, we'll see that it will project all the way. And then this, you watch this small thing, right? This small pedicle, this is what is called as the pedicle. This one is pedicle. Pedicle. So pedicle and lamina. It's the joint operation which will form the complete vertebral arch. Right? And we'll see that. So this is the spinous process. Spinous process. And we are telling that there is something special about it. And it is like it is bifid. Right? It is called as bifid. Bifid. And that's the speciality of this cervical vertebra and it happens like say c1 to vichara is is like very special right from c2 it starts with that bifid vert bifid spinous process all the way up to c6 when it comes to c7 so then c7 would say okay, c cervicals now i'll i have to deal with the thoracic right so then c1 a uh, c7 it starts getting the characteristics of thoracic, right? But still there will be few sunscars of cervical, but there will be few habits of thoracic also. 
and that is where the spinous process of C7 would not be bifid, it would be straight. It would be straight. Right? So, well, let it come and we'll see. But just do remember this, that this is how it goes. Now, why it should be bifid? Right? The reason is that it develops. It develops from two different secondary centers. Two different secondary ossification centers. Right? So that's why this is like a bifid, bifid spine. Now see this one. <coughs> now everyone has become <laughs> so creative and Tommy looks like smiling frog. Are and like happy face of cartoon, big cheeks and ears. I'm sure, right? I, I'll not say anything. Let that image come. And literally, I let your imagination go wild. I'll, I'll really wait for one or two minutes and you should say what it really looks like. It, it's so good. Now this one, this is, which view is this? No unseen it process. Right, so this is as seen from below. But friends, this is really a good thing. When we start imagining like say remote control or frog or like those, that happy face of cartoon, right, all those big cheeks, it actually makes the entire subject so easy, right. In pathology, I give you the guarantee. Right. Whosoever has must have created that subject of pathology must be extremely foody. Right? There will be cheese and burgers and, and all those things will come. Right? So when we'll be talking about pathology, right? All food items. All food items will come. And and such thing. Even the name of the cells, they will be like on food items. Okay. So over here. Why we say that it is we are watching from below? Everything looks similar, but there is no uncinate process. Right? So that's why this is 100% we are watching from below. Okay. This is once again which view? Top view. Right? This is top view. So these are unseen it. They are unseen it process. Rest of the structures you know it very well. So we'll go pit fast. This is like body. And see how nicely this entire structure that is the transverse process. And this one is the foramen transversarium, right? Transversarium. From this point onwards, we'll start writing it in short. Hmm? Okay, this one is now superior articular facet. All right, that is fine. This one would be lamina, right? Lamina. This is bifid spinous process, right? Bifid spinous process. That portion. That is pedicle, right? That is pedicle. And obviously, this in between is the foramen, that is vertebral foramen. So, it is vertebral foramen. Okay. All good. Now, see the thing. This is easy lateral view. Superior articular facet that is on that side. This is the inferior one, right? It's inferior articular facet or the process. And this one would be the transverse process. 
that's the body this one is uncinate process and that's the spine spinous process and we talked about it that is is bifid right so now it is easy to decipher remember these images because when we'll be learning x-rays at that point all these markings all these lines right they will be like projected in black and white but your familiarity with the with the object will make it much easier to identify into the x-rays right it will look exactly like this and i'll show you okay so here comes the remote control right this time this is a colored remote control previously it was black and white so it is the higher version right so these are like uncinate process right superior inferior so you will just write superior that is the inferior articular process right articular process and these are like transverse process transverse process in between that's the body right that's the body and right all good and and because this we are watching the body so definitely this is anterior view i'll keep on writing the which view we are talking about right so that you are very well properly oriented okay this is very beautiful right just we have to understand one thing only and that's what it is that the joint operation of the pedicle right it is the joint operation of this pedicle and the lamina that gives gives rise to this beautiful arch and that is called as the vertebral arch vertebral arch now see in this vertebral arch everyone is strong except this pedicle right pedicle one it is a small structure so it can be broken very easily and second the pedicle has been made weakened because of the presence of that foramen transverse area so that's why we'll just highlight it this way that this is a weak structure right this is weak one it is short and second because of foramen transverse area because that foramen is there foramen is there so it becomes like a deficit right so it it will break very easily okay now the ring which we are watching that is what is called as the superior annular annular means ring like right annular apices similarly there will be on the on the underside there will be inferior right so inferior annular epiphysis so one vertebra second vertebra above vertebra is inferior and lower vertebra is superior annular epiphysis they will be giving support and they will be giving attachment attachment to intervertebral disc intervertebral disc so that's how things would really go hmm. now here we understand three important things transverse process till this point we were telling that okay this is the transverse process yeah it is a transverse process right we'll write down it is a transverse process this is a top view right it's a top view because uncinate processes are seen and this one is anterior because spinous process is posterior so this is posterior so on transverse process there is one projection tubercle that is a tubercle and we'll call this as anterior tubercle right that's the best name can be given because it is anterior if that is anterior to there has to be another one and this is posterior otherwise we would have called that tubercle as just a tubercle 
but because there is something like posterior so we call it anterior so anterior tubercle and the posterior tubercle keep in mind this anterior tubercle is very interesting right so just keep in mind we'll come to that right now we are deliberately not talking about the muscles right but all those muscles which are muscles of neck right those muscles just like longus capitis right then scalenus anterior scalen anterior right all those are attached over there but we'll we'll talk about it in more detail just remember this scalenus anterior is on anterior tubercle and scalenus posterior that is on posterior tubercle right in between there is medius so this posterior tubercle has got big heart so he'll say okay, okay medius you also come right so he gives to scalenus medius and scalenus posterior plus there is levator scapulae etc well, I'll just write leo scapulae but in any case they will be coming more detail later okay so these are the two tubercles right and we are very much interested in this anterior tubercle it has got something amazing all right here comes say this portion this highlighted structure this is superior vertebral notch superior vertebral notch right so again that's one vertebra right and this is another one so here this is inferior vertebral notch this one is superior vertebral notch of another vertebra so that leads to formation of intervertebral foramen right so this is a notch this is a notch we'll see it in lateral view right so it's like a notch this is the notch which will actually lead to formation of right with inferior vertebral notch of obviously the the above one right above one of above vertebra and it will lead to formation of a foramen which is between two vertebra so it will be inter vertebral foramen intervertebral foramen that is what will take the color that is what would be giving path for path for spinal nerve right so those spinal nerves which are coming out right from the spinal cord because here is the spinal cord so it will be coming via this notch right and then it comes out from both the sides so thus we have got the groove here also right here here also there is a groove right again that groove is for is for the spinal nerve right that groove is for spinal nerve but this is how it really comes out from both the sides so that's how it comes rest is all superior vertebral notch right uh, i mean superior articular facet that we saw and we know that spinous process bifid we have talked about it right? okay now we were talking about anterior tubercle right so let's let's talk something about it because it is actually very very interesting so anterior tubercle of c6 only and why so because this c6 it is also called as the carotid tubercle carotid tubercle so that means there must be a structure with the same name nearby yeah it is there right and there is one another name it's a very stylish name so good to remember it is called as the chesagnac tubercle chesagnac 
Cepat. Name of a person. Right? So, this tubercle, it has got three very important associations. One, this is a tubercle which separates, it separates carotid artery with vertebral artery. Vertebral artery. This is first thing. Second, this will be a very important landmark for anesthesia. When we want, when we want to anesthetize brachial plexus or cervical plexus, right? Brachial plexus or cervical plexus. But this third importance, it is absolutely awesome. You can actually massage common carotid artery over here. Now, now why common carotid artery should be massaged, right? So, this is common carotid artery massage. Now, this, this massage is definitely not like a, that powerful pehlwan-like massage, right? You just tell the patient to so jao and then put the oil and start doing heavy massage. No, it is not like that. Right? This is a very delicate massage because you will be doing it to relieve symptoms of very important paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. Now I tell you this is a very bad thing. Whenever there is any any myocardial infarction, right, especially in young cases, that night is is very crucial because within say 12 to 16 hours there is this supraventricular tachycardia. If that thing occurs, right, it is actually fatal. So what can really be done for that? So there are some important landmarks. Right? Let's talk about it. These are the landmarks. All the way, C1 has got something important. C2, C3 has got some importance. <coughs> so C1, right, the level of C1, it is the level at which there is base of nose, base of nose and hard palate. Right? Hard palate. When you take your tongue, and touch on the upper surface and that is where you feel the hard palate right that's the hard palate c2 that is the level of say teeth of closed mouth right that is the level of c2 in head and neck these these are very vital because they are so precise right? and and we'll see the importance of it in, in that carotid massage. In fact, I'll explain the entire process that how to how one can really do the carotid massage and it can be really helpful. Right? So that's why we'll, we'll discuss it in slightly more detail. <coughs> so in C3, when we talk about C3, this is the level of mandible. Right? Because C2 was the level of teeth. So C3 will be the level of mandible. Right? And the hyoid bone, right? The hyoid bone, that would be C3. C4, that is super best. That's the level when the common carotid artery, right? It bifurcates. It bifurcates. The level of C4, C5, right? And we'll actually see these things. That is where the thyroid cartilage is there. I'll be able to show you this thing in, in the x-ray. 
right? And we'll see that X-ray in pretty good detail. And uh, between C6 and C7, there is another important cartilage. It is called as the cricoid cartilage. Now, at this junction, you might be wondering what are these thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage, etc. No worries. I just want you to be familiarized with these names because when those cartilages will actually come, right, the discussion would be extensive. And the level of C6. Right? This is the level of C6 and this is where the carotid pulse can be felt. Carotid pulse. Right? That is what we will be feeling against, against that anterior tubercle. Right. As such, it's a part of transverse process. So you can write even transverse process also. Now, how? Why is it so that every time we say that pulse, pulse, they are felt only at certain points? See, when you really want to feel the pulse, there has to be a hard substance below, so that 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 pressure, that pulse, it it is that thrust, it is it, it can be felt. Otherwise, if everything is soft, you try to feel the pulse, and if the artery sinks below, you won't be able to feel its thrust. Right, so that's why over here, this is the bony structure which is on the base. On top of it, there is pulsatile artery, and then you just put your hand delicately and you feel the pulse. So that is where it is felt. Now let's talk about this carotid artery massage. See, right now. We are not, will not be discussing at length about paro, paroxysmal vent, supraventricular tachycardia. Right? We will not be talking in detail. But we just know one thing that this is tachycardia, right? When the heart rate is increasing. So it is necessary to take this heart rate down. Right? And any of the method in which you would like to take the heart rate down right heart rate down they are all collectively called as the vagal maneuvers right they are called as the vagal maneuver okay so first let's talk about carotid artery because it is the most important the rest are also there and we'll we'll just have brief about it but regarding the carotid artery massage first locate the adam's apple right the most prominent point on your neck so this is this is how that thyroid cartilage is there right thyroid cartilage they are like shield right they are shield from both the sides and they meet in the center right and that's what is called as the most prominent part and that is also called as adam's apple right so basically they are thyroid cartilage now see just by learning this carotid artery massage you will be learning parallelly so many things this thyroid cartilage right this is larynx larynx is your voice box so if you just put your hand over here and say hmm, right you will feel the vibration so that larynx it is just behind it right larynx is just behind so thyroid cartilage is in front of larynx Larynx is your voice box, right, which generates sound. So that is your voice box. And just below, right, in front and below is thyroid gland, right, thyroid gland. So whenever there is enlargement of thyroid gland, that enlargement would be just below Adam's apple. So it is at a lower level when that thyroid gland would be and last so the point is we just reach to this point right that is that is the adam's apple so let's let me draw here right so here it is right that's the adam's apple look it and start moving laterally right now there is a muscle which is going in cross 
right which is called as the sternocleidomastoid right which is going all the way from mastoid process to sternum and clavicle that's why its name is say it goes to sternum so sterno it goes to clavicle so cledo and it goes top onto the mastoid so that is the mastoid process that muscular mastoid process just medial right this is the point where you would start getting the pulse and this is the carotid carotid sinus right so just take two fingers and start moving and just apply little pressure and you'll start feeling the pulse right feel it you'll be able to feel it so easily it is with very powerful thrust right so first you feel that pulse now in supraventricular tachycardia when the heart rate is very high even if you take the ecg the diagnosis becomes difficult it is necessary to take the take the heart rate down right so first thing first whenever you are planning for this carotid artery massage right first thing the ecg tracing should be in process right so that if anything goes wrong you know it immediately second important point carotid sinus they are on both the sides this procedure is to be done on only one side right to be done on one side don't try to do it on both the sides together never right so to be done on one side third important point and that is over here it is the constant pressure that would be more effective as compared to you give pressure and take away you give pressure and take away no right this is this is not actually like that massage it is just a compression the name is massage right carotid artery massage but it is as such steady pressure so i'll just write down the keyword it is the steady pressure which is advisable right and fourth important thing comes that for what duration at least minimum 5 seconds minimum 5 seconds right you apply the pressure and maximum maximum 10 seconds not more than 10 seconds so maximum 10 seconds after this what should you see right you are already taking the ecg so in that ecg right it will give you some result what could it be one sinus rhythm that will go down right so there would be the transient decrease right transient decrease transient drop in sinus rhythm so heart rate would decrease heart would slow down right so there is decrease in sinus rate the second is you know the p wave right this is p then q r s then t right that's how it goes this is the p wave and if i zoom it like this right because so this is what is called as the its height it is called as the amplitude correct that is called as the amplitude <clears throat> so there is decrease in p wave amplitude amplitude right. and third and important thing is that there would be hypotension it would it won't be extensive hypotension but yes it would be a noticeable hypotension now if you are not getting any of these changes it is because say over there it is a barrow receptor correct it is a barrow receptor pressure receptor so whenever there is increased pressure right there is increased pressure in so it will send the message that okay lower the blood pressure over here we are mechanically stimulating it and we are sending the message via vagus that okay slow down slow down right so it is like a mechanical stimulation of carotid those baroreceptors to slow down the heart rate 
right? Because see, if the heart is pumping faster, that means more and more blood is going into those cavities, right? In, into that entire arterial system and it is increasing the pressure. When heart rate slows down, so that pressure would decrease. Right? So over here, mechanically we are stimulating carotid sinus, that is those baroreceptors, and then we are telling it slow down. Okay. In case if nothing is happening, you are not getting any of these results. So then and then you go to the opposite side, right? So if no response, then opposite side procedure, right? Same procedure on the opposite side. Yes, exactly, exactly. Right? So this is this is how you will be doing it. Now, there is something which you must know, which is called as the carotid sinus hypersensitivity. That's the reason that this procedure should be done by a doctor only. Because you should know about carotid sinus hypersensitivity. It's like when you are you are watching the ECG, right? And if there is a ventricular pause, right? P wave is because of because of that atrial stimulation, right? Atria. If there is ventricular pause, of more than three seconds. Or still more important, if there is drastic systolic drop, right? Systolic blood pressure drastically drops by more than 50 mm of mercury. This is then carotid sinus hypersensitivity, right? So take care. So this is how it is. It is really utilized. As such, it's a pretty big topic, but because that that tubercle. That anterior tubercle is so important and this is with respect to that C6. So that's why we talked about it. Huh. We were talking about that vagal, vagal maneuvers, correct? Vagal maneuvers. Maneuvers. Which really slows down the heart rate. What else could it be? Right? So one is very common, right? That is Valsalva maneuver. Valsalva maneuver. In that, what, what one has to do? Close the nose, close the mouth, right? So, nose closed, mouth closed, and then try to blow the air, right? So, this close, and then try to blow the air. That is Valsalva maneuver, right? That would be slowing the heart rate. Then, coughing, right? That would slow down. Gag reflex, that is irritating that just putting the finger and irritating the most posterior part of the tongue, that is the gag, right? Then, say knees, they are tightly bend the knees and hold against the knees against chest, right? Knees against chest, but this is, this is not instant, right? It will take at least a minute, one minute plus. So, when someone holds, it will slow down the heart rate. Then, this is very effective. That cold water means it has to be ice cold, right? It has, so I'll say ice cold water or towel on face, right? That would slow down. And the most scientific, that is carotid sinus massage. So these are all collectively called as the Vagal maneuvers, right? Sorry. All right. So here, that was our famous anterior tubercle. Right? And in case of C6, it comes to that. This is body. That's the body, right? That's the spinous process. You know it well, it is bifid and this is say inferior articular process 
or the facet, this one would be the anterior tubercle. Yeah, we wrote that anterior tubercle, and this one is the posterior tubercle, right? The collectively, this entire thing is the transverse process, right? Posterior tubercle, collectively, it is the transverse process. All right. So that was about our classical or typical vertebra that is from C3, 4, 5, 6, right? Now, let's welcome our first chief guest. This is C1, right? And also called as the Atlas, right? And this one, this one would be the AO joint atlanto occipital joint and that is the yes joint right that's a yes joint this is for yes plus lateral flexion right. the lateral flexion so that's the thing and we remove all the other bones and we just keep this one right looks like some bird is flying right so this is this is isolated c1 isolated c1 let's see it now see this is no wonder this is a top view and in case of c1 the biggest thing is Two, two interesting things. There is no body. There is no spinous process. Right? No body and no spinous process. So, that vertebral foramen, that vertebral foramen, so over here, it's, it's exceptionally big. So, here, it's the spinal cord and this one would be the place where there would be the dense or the odontoid process from the C2, right? That would come up, right? We'll see that. So right now we will just write for dense, for dense. Okay, these big ones, right? Such big, huge. They are for occipital condyles, right? They are for occipital condyles. So that's what will be forming AO joint or the yes joint, right? Atlanta occipital joint. The transverse process, here it is, right? That is the transverse process. And no wonder this one would be the foramen transverse area. So that's easy. This much is enough for a main transverse area. Right? What we really watch in this case is that where is lamina? Well, lamina was like that when the spine is here, spinous process is here. So then we, we used to call this thing as lamina. But now because it is not there, now everything is in the form of a continuous arch. So it would be much better if we call this entire thing from here to here right from from here to here as posterior arch posterior arch it is it looks so similar what is anterior posterior well spinal cord is always posterior to the body over here it is said that for c1 its body is with c2 Right, so that would be where the dense would be there. So that's why this is anterior. So that's why this is posterior arch. So if it is anterior, so we can call this thing as anterior arch. So that is the anterior arch. Right, so this is anterior arch and the posterior arch. And then if everything is in the form of a ring, there is condensation of bone on the lateral side and that's why it is called as the lateral mass lateral mass so here those lateral masses they are big above there is occipital condyles uh, facet 
right and below for the c2 and that's how things would go but because it has got no body that's why there won't be any intervertebral disc between c1 and c2 right so that's how these things go let's see it like this so here that's the transverse process right this is this is not spine right because this is c1 and we are watching laterally this is lateral view and there is no spine so that's why this is posterior arch right and then this this big structure right and we are tempted to say that it is body but again there is no body in c1 this is lateral mass right it is lateral mass so that's it these are the points which are to be taken care of because we are dealing with the c1 yeah right very easily very nicely so many things clarified this is anterior arch right this is transverse process foramen transverse arium this is posterior arch hai na? right then then that's a lateral mass and done lateral mass and done right and yeah this this is for those occipital condyles ox for occipital condyles these are the articular facet superior articular facet so just it's okay superior articular facets done definitely looks like a drone huh? before those ipl matches right similar type of structure used to come so here it is the transverse process these are inferior articular facets right which will go with c2 and these are this one would be the anterior arch and this bigger one is the posterior arch and then right? huh, lateral mass that's all that's the lateral mass with which all the structures are connected right mm, this is what i was talking about right this is where we see both both these our chief guests together this above this is c1 and this one is c2 right that is c2 so this c1 who is who is like right there was one eagle right i saw one image of eagle right with its wings like this or one of my students said that it it is like that someone is sitting in gym and then then doing those chest exercise right so many things see this is this is odontoid process and i'm sure you will come up with something odontoid process also called as dense right and it's part of c2 right it's part of c2 and say that c1 c2 now let's remove ha huh, this is this is we are watching from which side see this is spine this is spinous process right that means this is a posterior view so we are watching from the back right that's where we see that it is this odontoid who is anteriorly situated and see over here right this is anterior view so that's 
that's the body that's the body of c2 right and this is this is like anterior arch of c1 right that's the dense or the odontoid process of c2 right this one is the posterior arch of c1 right and then the transverse process etc but that's how it is arranged so this one would be like an anterior view <laughs> I thought so, huh? Gauri. See, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so so now let's fade this C one, right? That's the C one. So we are fading it because now will be putting our attention on C2. Right? Here it is. So this is which view? Immediately we watch the spinous process, right? That's the spinous process. Spinous process. So this is C2 and this is posterior view. So that's easy. Hmm. That one is dense. That is also fine right posterior view and because there is spinous process so this one would be lamina right and these are the transverse process transverse process and then there is superior and inferior articular process so we just watch this this is superior and this one is inferior articular process right and that's it right now see dense its other name was we said odontoid odontoid process odontoid this is like a teeth or tooth right it's similar to tooth so that's why it is called as the odontoid tooth like structure. Ah, this is good, right? This is good. This is the top view. And this top view is giving superb clarity. So this is no wonder this is dense, right? And now we know this is lamina, correct? That's the spinous process. So no problems. And this portion this is the body right and foramen transversarium right just a quick revision foramen transversarium vertebral artery vertebral vein and inferior cervical ganglion right that is what it gives passage to and this would be say superior articular that's it, right? And that's the transverse process, transverse process. And this would be the vertebral foramen. And if that's the lamina, right? This is the lamina. So then this one, that would be pedicle. Why every time we are taking them together? Because collectively, the vertebral arch Right, vertebral arch is a joint operation of both of them, pedicle and lamina. Say over here, you know now all the structures. So I'll not be writing anything into it. Right? We just say say this is this is like dense, superior articular face, this is transverse process, that's the lamina, right? This is spinous process. Then that's it. This is inferior articular process. That process. This is vertebral foramen, and then that is pedicle, right? And this one is body, right? Tuck, 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 tuck. All gone. So practice. Hmm. 
just because it looks so beautiful right that's why this is what is called as the vertebral arch but this if this arch is broken then there is a trouble and that is what happens when someone hangs right so it is this pedicle plus lamina and as we said it is this pedicle which is the weakest structure so if anything goes wrong it goes wrong to him right we'll see the x-ray also now over here right that's the apex hmm? then see this part this part this is what it is it is the inferior vertebral notch right that's it because then it will be in association with the superior vertebral notch of the lower one and that's how it will form intervertebral foramen which will be giving path for those spinal nerves right rest all is known to you right spinous process and then lamina pedicles foramen transverse arium transverse process superior articular facet all known to you okay that's spinous process right here they are inferior articular facet rest all is simple right because this is like transverse process then this whole thing is body right and this one is dense right and joining transverse process with the with the body so in between that one would be the would be like a pedicle right so and and yeah in this one would be the lamina and collectively both the sides that forms the vertebral arch okay again okay, this is for practice I mean, that would be for practice yes everything is fine so see this is lamina right that's the pedicle transverse process dense body inferior articular facet right that's the and that's the spinous process Done. same my favorite right this is vertebral arch so see the extent of the arch right so from from the lamina and it goes on the all the way covering the body right so this gentleman is back now right so say hello right and the skull is always smiling me even if you try to do this right still he will not be udas okay so here it is our c7 right c7 that's what will now isolate so here it is c7 now the c7 this is which view immediately you will see that this is body right we are watching the body so that means this is anterior view you are right this is anterior view right so there is uncinate process you sufficient right that's uncinate process and these are the foramen transverse arium this is the this is the transverse process right and all the structures accordingly right let's move here it is this is where we need to see two important things that now it is going into the region 
into the region of thorax, right? It will say, okay, bus, now the dosti with cervical vertebra is over and now I'll be talking to those big guys, rich guys, right? That is the thorax, thoracic vertebra, they are definitely bigger, stronger. So this tells that no bifid spine, right? So here, the spinous process is not bifid. It's not bifid. And the best is, this is so prominent, this is so straight that it is palpable. So just take your hand back and the moment you touch, right, you'll find this spine, right, spinous process. So it is palpable. This is lamina, fair enough, right, lamina. Then that's the transverse process, right, mm, this is good. And then this is pedicle, okay, that is also fine and this is body. So almost everything is fine except the, except the spinous process, right, this spinous process which is not bifid. In thoracic vertebra, again, they are not bifid. So, this we keep as practice, right? You just practice on this. And everything is there. The zancinate process, body, superior articular facet, lamina, pedicles, transverse process, spinous process, which is not bifid, all, all everything there. Again, this is same what we discussed in the form of this part, this one, that is superior annular epiphysis, right? And along with the inferior annular, uh, annular epiphysis of above vertebra, together they will be giving attachment to, right, attachment to, intervertebral disc which will be acting as a shock absorber right rest is this is vertebral vertebral arch okay but this is interesting see the foramen transverse deliberately it was kept on halt this is foramen Transversarium. This foramen transversarium from C up to C6, right? There was strict discipline, right? They were all very properly rounded vertebral artery, vertebral vein, inferior cervical ganglia, they were passing. But now C7 tells that now the ladka bada ho gaya. Right, so you'll say, I need not follow the rules of that cervical rules, right? And and those big guys like thorax, thoracic vertebras, they said, ke, no need to do that. So he also tells, ke, hai? Chalo, because of those sanskars, foramen transverse arium is there, right? But well, on both the sides, they are not same. In some cases. It is exactly like this, right? There, there might be two, there might be one, there might be some smaller, bigger, some variations, they are there. But the most important thing is, foramen transversarium was for vertebral artery, vertebral vein, right? These two structures, now they pass this they pass in front of transverse process and not through the foramen. So vertebral artery and vert vertebral vein, right, they pass in front of transverse process and not through. In some cases, vertebral vein Vertebral vein feels like chalo artery ko nahi jana to na se, right? Vertebral vein will say ke, no problem, I'll go. Right? So 
सो शी टेल्स दैट आई एल गो लेट द आर्टरी गो आउटसाइड राइट बट अगेन इट इज वेरिएबल सो दिस इज अ मेजर चेंज वॉट वी रियली सी इन केस ऑफ सी सेवन रेस्ट इज वन एंड वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट एंड दैट इज द स्पाइनस प्रोसेस राइट सी द स्पाइनस प्रोसेस इट इज स्टाउट इट इज टफ इट इज स्ट्रेट right more or less it is like a like a thoracic right this is exactly looking like as if a bird is diving right a big eagle if it is diving looks like this uh how to differentiate between annular epiphysis and uncinate process see uncinate process they are the bony structures right they are on the sides they are on the sides annular one which is inside and it is it is surrounding so it is like this annular is like this right and those uncinate processes right they are like this so here is uncinate and here is the annular one right and right this one is the body for practice right that's for practice you know it okay now see this is not that difficult but it would help you a lot i don't know whether they they any time it would be asked in exam or not i don't know but if you remember this much it would be superbly easy and you will be very scientifically start looking at the x rays so in any of the radiograph or the x ray which we say right otherwise it is called as the radiograph watch for anterior vertebral line first right so anterior surface of the vertebra just joint all of them this is anterior vertebral line similarly posterior vertebral line now they follow a very disciplined sequence right similarly the lamina right if you collectively see the lamina and the spinous process so this would be the shape of that interspinous line spino lamellar till they are like this all good but if this line is broken right it is what is called as the incongruency right it is called as the incongruency or we can put the simple word that any disturbance right any disturbance in the line now that thing could be because of if there is any cervical fracture right that is the symbol of fracture if there is any cervical fracture or a very common thing spondylolisthesis now what spondylolisthesis is when one vertebra it slides on the second right and it loses its alignment this is displacement right so spondylolisthesis is displacement displacement of one vertebra with respect to with respect to other right and here it is see this is spondylolisthesis not the not the cervical one right but see over here right this one you can see that that it has shifted so that is spondylolisthesis now there are few grades available not at all complicated right not at all complicated let's make some space over here grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 and grade 5 right even within just 30 seconds you'll be able to understand it that's the width of the vertebral body and this is another one see this much is the displacement this displacement right this displacement it is of what percentage to the width of the vertebra right what percentage so one person grade one means when the displacement is less than 25% so you can say 0 to 25% 
25 to 50 percent is grade 2, 50 to 75 percent is grade 3, 75 to 100 percent is grade 4 and more than 100 percent is grade 5. More than 100 percent means here is one vertebra and the second one has at Cross the entire vertebra and it has been displaced completely, right? Maybe because of severe injury, anything. So that is the grade five. And what could be the commonest causes of spondylolisthesis? It could be degenerative, right? It could be degenerative, age related, right? Traumatic, right? Maybe because of some accident, right? Trauma. Traumatic, or there could be some pathological reason, pathological or post-surgical, post-surgery. Right? So that can lead to this. So that's how, say, you see this thing. One more reason could be any when any of the ligamentum ligament injury. So when this alignment is is disturbed right all right this is what i was waiting for if you have understood everything till this point of time you will be in a very good position to see so many structures so many structures and trust me today we will be watching just 10 15 structures in this but as we'll progress this x-ray will keep on coming Right, where we'll be able to see all these, right, all these, all these things, everything. There are some shadows, there are some cartilages, everything you'll be able to, because this is a very proper x-ray with very good exposure, right. So everything is seen very nicely. Let's pick up those structures which we already know, right, for today. So this one, uh, no, this color would mix. Huh. That, that's fine. So this one is squamous part of occipital, right? Occipital bone, squamous occipital bone. That is easy, hmm. right? That is, then that's the squamous. So this one would be the C1, right? Then this one would be the C2. Fair enough. If it is C1, so I will not write I will not write over here. I can write C2. It is the spinous process. Right. But in C1, I would not write spinous process. Right. Be though I am very much tempted. But I remember C1, that is where it was posterior arch. Correct. Posterior arch. So that is the much better. Posterior arch. Then, seen so beautifully seen. Watch for this area. Uh -huh color this one watch for this area so nice right how nicely it is seen over there the inferior and below it is the superior articular facets right how nicely they are seen right no problems then same way over here then what it is taking towards the body, right? So, over here, that one, that one would be the lamina. That is the lamina, right? And over here, we can very well write that this is a spinous process, right? It's a spinous <coughs> process. So far, things are okay. Now, let's watch for something which is hidden. We are about to mark C2, right? So let's trace here, 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 here it is here. And then let me zoom and try to watch this X-ray from slight distance. And immediately you'll start noticing that, okay, it goes like this, 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 this. And that's how, that's how the entire C2 is formed. Right? This is how it is there. Right? Now, I'll remove this line and you watch it. Yeah. Right? Can you appreciate 
this is what this one that is the dense right that is the dense or the odontate process of c2 right if that is the dense then what could this be this one this white structure this one right in front of the dense right there could be only one structure and that is anterior arch right it is the anterior arch of atlas atlas right so so far so good now we'll watch some of those structures which we have not touched i just want to make you familiarize with some of the some of the terms so that's why we are doing it otherwise it has got nothing to do with at least say cervical part right so i'm just making this arrow like this because there is a structure which we need to see and it is coming in between hmm. now see all those can you can you see those shadows right over here 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 right over here over here 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 right so that is very true that these this is something like air you know that is like air and air is present in trachea so here it is this is trachea so that is air then there are some very prominent things see this one right it is completely 100% it is bone because see the density white right so prominent so which bone could it be right just here right that is that is the hyoid bone right hyoid bone to be very specific this is body of the hyoid bone because then there are cornua etc and and you can watch that there is something a very good shield like structure over here hmm? right you can see that and that is that entire thing that is the thyroid cartilage thyroid cartilage right and just underneath over here right that is the cricoid cartilage required cartilage that's it right so just to remember this much then over here say all these shadows right this is nasopharynx nasopharynx right and and then epiglottis right so so nicely seen right this is this is in fact can you see this this one right that is epiglottic cartilage so no worries but that's it right still there are so many structures but this much is enough then later on we'll keep on adding more and more but once you have understood this thing right what is wrong with this what is wrong with this if we implement same knowledge right that anterior right see over here we saw this that anterior vertebral line right the moment we try to implement it over here right anterior vertebral vertebral line and and this is what right this is so disrupted that means something is wrong and what is wrong it is massively wrong massively wrong to understand this we'll mark this right let's mark where is c2 this is this is this is here and that's the odontoid process all the way it is coming from the top right and then coming over here and then it is going like this and going like this and that's the c2 and c1 c1 is this is the anterior arch and that one is the posterior arch and that's how the c 
one and about c3 right that's the c3 right here is the formation of that intervertebral foramen and that's the c3 correct so here it is this is total displacement right total displacement it is because of the fracture because of the fracture and this is what is called as the this is what is called as the hangman's fracture hangman's fracture right so this is a bilateral fracture and what really happens in this the c2 is injured right axis right axis is injured so when it occurs it occurs when when there is say all these things they occur because of the hyperextension right hyperextension so initially there is flexion and then there is hyperextension so when it is done with jerk right so especially when in the boxing right if that punch any of the impact sports muthai or boxing or any of them when it is it comes on the face so then there is that entire head it goes back right it is like hyper extension so whether it is hanging right or impact sport right impact sport so muthai boxing kung fu martial arts all or the accidents right accident high impact and then when the car crashes and then the head goes back right or the fall in all these cases right because of the hyper extension right it is because of the hyper extension the entire impact it comes on the c2 right it comes on the c2 now this hangman it can be of two types right it could be typical it could be atypical now typical is very easy to understand in typical those pedicles break right and now you know it very well that why pedicles should break because they are the weakest structure as such it is small and plus there is foramen transverse area so it is making it still weaker so it breaks right in atypical it is the posterior part of body breaks right posterior part of body breaks so either case right whether it is and and mysteriously right surprisingly dense is intact dense is intact but because of those fracture of pedicles right it leads to damage to the spinal cord right so in this case the spinal cord is damaged and when the spinal cord is damaged immediately associated is like from here that midbrain is there right so midbrain pons medulla oblongata and it is the medulla which is having that respiratory center respiratory center which is controlling the respiratory muscles respiratory muscles so if this center is damaged so those respiratory muscles they are paralyzed and that leads to say the death right so that's what is called as the hangman's fracture so this was about it right so our eagle right he is telling thank you that giraffe is telling thank you and and regarding the giraffe it was like that even though giraffe's neck is so long giraffe has got seven cervical vertebrates vertebrae only right so they both are telling thank you for remembering thank you so much right saving this file putting into our shared folder thank you and
गुड नाइट सी यू सोन बाय